component next component of our uh, uh, what do you say uh, vlsi devices which is wires we already talked about wires a little earlier so we we can be relatively quick now so this is what wires are what are they made of we discussed this in much detail earlier okay. what are the wires made of copper copper or other copper or aluminum sir yeah depending on so in advanced technologies they are always all 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 fabs in advanced technologies use copper in earlier technologies let us say 180 nanometer and 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 older people use aluminum because the copper process was not as defined yet however today you will also find technologies which use 180 nanometers with copper these are hybrid technologies to gain density or to have more current ca carrying capability and so on but yes what we are looking at is that these wires are made out of copper which is more ductile than aluminum and therefore these wires can be drawn very close to each other we also know that these wires are like these cuboids this is wire 1 this is wire 2 and when they run parallel to each other this is the kind of 3d space they will create amongst themselves hmm? so what happens what all kinds of capacitances will you see here so this is a metal running beneath hmm? let us say this is metal 1 and this is metal 2 so what all kind of capacitances will this wire 1 see so this uh, this will see a capacitance between the other wire in the same layer hmm and due to these lines of forces okay yeah and i'm assuming and... there will be another layer above these wires okay. so there, there could be another wire running above it so there would be lines of forces like this also and similarly so with the below layer and below lines of forces layer. like this are you able to see this hmm <laughs> the voice is not clear uh, sir i am unable to pictureize this sir so uh, how is it different this m1 and wire one can you please yeah different metal layers na okay. we we saw the dual damascene process yes 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 so what yes. were we doing we were making one metal layer then we made vias and the second metal layer then we made vias and the third metal layer so these are these metal layers the lowest plate is metal 1 then you have these wires in metal 2 then we have metal 3 up there okay sir yeah got it okay so but metal 1 and different metal layer have been connected with the ana so like then there is yeah, no but you but suppose i am running a clock and i am running a data signal uh data signal is running in metal 1 clock is running in metal 2 will i connect them also with the vr no nahi na yeah. there are two independent signals running in two different metals what's the big deal okay. hmm so uh we're talking over here as about two things in this slide we're talking about two things width of the wires and the spacing between the wires we're also talking about thickness height of the wire and the intermetal dielectric height h okay an important thing is what is the ratio of thickness versus width of the wire in old processes wires were like this so intermetal capacitances played a big role because of lines of forces but in today's advanced technologies wires are like this so even if there is a a metal layer going running from above it the, there are few lines of forces between them but there are more lines of forces in the intermetal region are you able to see this Hmm? so what are we what we are talking about essentially is that there are different components of capacitances c top c 
C bot and C adjacent. So in older technologies, C top and C bot were the dominating capacitances. But in advanced technologies of today, uh, C adjacent is a very big component of the total capacitance. Okay. And if you uh, want to look at how does uh, how do these capacitances change as as you bring the wires closer or something like that, you will notice that this is how it appears. So <clears throat> we have M1 and M3 planes there. Planes means there is a high density of wires there. And the spacing between my metal two wires is, is changing like this. So what do I observe? That when the width of the wire is less, let us look here. When the width of the wire is less, then an isolated wire would have this capacitance, whereas a dense, a dense structure of wires in metal two and metal three planes would have this capacitance. Hmm? Now, if my wire width is very large, then adjacent capacitance does not change much. When I have isolated, when I have isolated uh, metal two wires, then the capacitance doesn't change much. But when I put metal one and metal three planes, because the width of my wire is large, this intermetal capacitance also starts to play a significant role. So what do you mean by isolated? I mean, isolated. Isolated means, means no metal one, metal, metal three planes. This metal two is there. Okay. So, so we are looking at a plane, not between layers here in this graph. Yeah. You may say so. Jaisa yahan pe humne tha, that this is a plane there. Shielding kara humne, let us say. Okay. So what else can you deduce from here? If your wires, metal two wires were very close, let us say 320 nanometer close, then the, the change in capacitance of wires because of whether there is a metal plate up there or down there doesn't really matter much. Are you able to see this? No, sir. So what does this hollow rhombus represent according to you? So I mean, S is the distance between the two wires in the same plane. In the same plane. Right. So I'm saying that two wires are very close. They're only 320 nanometers apart. Yes, sir. You see, if there was only single wire and no other wire, the wire capacitance would have been something like 60 or 70 atosarids per micron. When I brought other wires close to it, reduce the spacing, the capacitance has increased from that 60 to something like 230. Okay. Right. Now, when the wire was only, there was only single wire because the spacing is infinity means there is only single wire. And I put in the metal one and metal three planes, the capacitance increased from 60 to 130, more than doubled. But in a dense wire configuration, when I put the metal one and the metal three planes, the capacitance increased from 220 to only 230. Insignificant change. Are you able to see this? Okay, so it means that at a very smaller, with a bender going to very smaller dimensions, then the intermetal one is getting neglected. Intrametal capacitance dominates. Uh, in between the same layer, it is dominating, but yes. between layers is now. Okay. Right. Yes. And if you were using wide wires, then yes, intrametal also has some influence. See what happened? For very wide wires, the capacitance increased from 260 to 380. Hana? 
but if your wires are thin which is usually the case then there is not much impact of whether there is a wire running up there or not that doesn't change the wire capacitance significantly are you able to see this hmm? yes sir yeah yes okay so let us look at how do these capacitances compare amongst each other typically dense wires would have a capacitance of something like 0.2 femtofarads per micron whereas a gate would have a capacitance of 1 to 2 femtofarad per micron we discussed this in the last session i had asked you if i have to implement a capacitance with gates or with metals i prefer to implement a, a capacitor with with gates why because it is much much denser you see we put the numbers over here today hmm and uh we we see that the diffusion capacitance is also very high why because over there also there is only this pn junction the dielectric thickness is very thin okay so what is this by diffusion capacitance coming here so i'm not understanding no we are just yeah. talking about different capacitive components as to why how do the what is the uh, typical range of different capacitances that come into picture okay so in the earlier models we are giving a number to the models basically. yeah yeah so we just talking about this earlier model now we are comparing the wire capacitance with the diffusion capacitance now okay okay it has nothing to do with wire capacitance we are just saying because you are now putting the numbers i have not given you any numbers till now na first time i am giving you some numbers so so that you get a feel of what what order we are talking about okay so diffusion capacitance is actually comparable to gate capacitance but diffusion is very resistive so we do not even if we have to make capacitances we would not use diffusion as a medium to make those capacitances or even if i use a diffusion thing i will put lots of contacts over it i will put lots of wires over it metal over it so that uh, the resistance reduces so this okay. point of not of concern so avoid using diffusion runners for wires what is this meaning sir so let us say i have a, a inverter that is connected to let us say another okay. sorry i accidentally pressed end slide so there kya karu i have to restart then this card let me restart the slide show yeah you're able to see the slide again yes sir yeah. so let us say we have an inverter that is driving another inverter hmm what does that mean that means there will be a poly a pmos and an nmos and the output of this pmos and nmos will go and connect to the poly of this other inverter something like this we want to do yes, what is sir. being said is you connected them through wires now don't go to diffusion layer and route through diffusion route only through metal now you will think why would i want to route through diffusion you may want to route through diffusion because there is the metal space is already occupied by some other metal there there is some other signal that is running in metal one so you don't have metal one available so you say okay let me go through diffusion and run it you can do that but that is very resistive So I mean, what is routing through diffusion meaning here? I mean, we connecting the metal one to the poly. That is diffusion. You are talking. No, routing means connecting these wires. This is routing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This I understand. So what is being said is, don't use diffusion for routing purposes. Don't so use diffusion runners for in in place of wires. So what this mean? Yeah, diffusion runners. What is this diffusion runners? Diffusion layer. I could just make a diffusion layer like this. and i would say i will see diffusion layer means active region na so current will flow through a diffusion layer also so we need to using to diffusion layers to be diffusing to diffusion layers in this process i'm sorry 
So for very short wires, you can possibly use polysilicon at times, but avoid diffusion. Okay. Okay, sir. So uh, one very important, a quick concept. So this we had already seen last time in the earlier thing. We had already seen that. So very quick concept I would want to give is that of sheet resistance. See this H as a designer, you have no control over it. Do you see that? This is a technology feature. Yes, sir. Hmm? So the total resistance of a wire in that this rho over edge is actually constant for you. Nay? Yes, sir. Height is not in the RP. But your overall resistance then is only dependent on L by W. Which we can say that L by W is the equal to number of squares that I can make on this wire in the direction of flow of current. Are you able to see this? L by W has no dimension. Because L is also in micron, W is also in micron. So it has no dimension in itself. What does L by W represent? the number of squares that I can make or that I have to travel in the direction of flow of the current. Yes, sir. So what is the unit of sheet resistance then? Ohms per meter square. Or... Ohm per square, not meter square. As many squares, that will be the resistance that will. So I will simply multiply sheet resistance with the number of squares and I will get the value of resistance. So if I have to flow current in this direction, what will be the value of how many squares are there in this direction? Let us say this is the total length of the wire. How many squares in this direction? Two. So I will get the value of two or not. If I have to flow current in this direction, now what? Sir, half. R not by two. R not by two. Okay. Sir, we have to define a unit uh, square also, right? Uh, unit square is always by uh, defined by the width, huh? When I was moving, in, when I was moving current in this direction, the width was L, and the length L for which two. I was running was W. So W by L is one by two. That is where R not by two. When I'm moving in the other direction, when I'm moving in this direction, my width is W and length is L. So it becomes, uh, and length is twice of W, therefore it becomes two, two are not. Are you able to see this? So what is this square concept you're talking about? Because we have wire, right? So we are talking why we are talking. So what is the formula of resistance? Rho L by A. Rho L by A. That is what we have written over here. Yeah. Yes, sir. What is A? The cross section through which the current is flowing. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I said Rho by H is R naught. Rho by H is R naught. Yeah. So, so what am I left with? H is fixed. Yeah. Here is what we have started. For a given technology, H is fixed. Can you, okay. can you as a designer change H? I'm sure, sir. No, no. You make metal one. Is yeah. you have the flexibility to change the width of the wire. Yes. You sir. have the flexibility to change the length of the wire. Can you change the thickness of the wire when you are making a layout? No, no, sir. 
So that H is fixed for the for for a given technology, is it not? Yeah, yeah. Yes. That is what we are calling as R not. Okay. Now, what do I multiply R not with to get the value of resistance? The number of squares that have to be traversed. This ratio is the number of squares. Okay. Okay. So I think we are already on time now. So this this also we had we had already seen earlier. So we will not look into this again. We've already even had a uh, a question in your quiz on this topic. Uh, we will we can probably talk about polishing, but that we can do later also sometime. So we'll talk about these models in the next class.